Why do we see a pattern of discrimination, suppression, and prejudice against black Africans? And even that pattern lingers to this day. What's the made-up hostility the white European and Arabs felt toward black Africans? Historically speaking, it was due to the superiority the black Africans have had since the start of civilization. Black Africans were the richest of the rich, living in gold cities and making the world jealous. That's where non-black people, with an inferiority complex, decided to portray black Africans as inferior. But how? Well, it was done by using their dark complexion, plump lips, and woolly hair. Yes, they felt a threat so striking that they declared black Africans a backward, inferior race. All their struggle was to show how uncivilized black Africans were so they could teach them how civilized people like them live. That's where the wicked journey against black Africans started. Today, even if everyone stays silent, history speaks too loud to be avoided. But the real focus should be this question. Why do non-blacks see black Africans as a threat? And why does this same feeling prevail even today? Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about the people that are evidently ancestors of and superior to everyone, the black. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. In this episode, we will debunk why black Africans were historically viewed as a threat. Let's get started. The first reason why non-black felt threatened was black Africans' physical superiority. Historically, and even today, black people are the strongest humans on earth. And this strength manifests itself in their physical charisma, which is hidden from nobody. Non-blacks knew if blacks were allowed to participate in their matters, they would eventually dominate what they held dear. Therefore, blacks were left in the whirlpool of a new fabricated system. Non-blacks, like the European colonizer, made it a social culture to enslave blacks. Since they couldn't compete with blacks in terms of strength, doing physical work was deemed inferior. Instead, someone who could do sophisticated jobs was considered civilized. And these civilized were then seen fit to be kings and rulers. Simply, blacks were pulled out of the power equation. You see, non-black changed the system which graded people. Physical superiority was deemed inferior as compared to being delicate and fragile, which was considered superior. Since European colonizers were weak and delicate themselves, they propagated this as a sign of delicacy. In the writing of Greek philosophers like Aristotle, it could be seen that he considered slaves as people born to be subjected. And don't forget, most enslaved people were black in those days. Aristotle said that these slaves should work for their Greek masters so the masters could have leisure. Without any hesitation, black people were considered lesser. Even different and brutal punishments were made for black slaves because it was considered that enslaved people were less sensitive to pain. This takes us to the second reason for the threat, which is genetic annihilation. You see, since black were enslaved, they were ripped off all of their basic rights. However, the brutal masters still felt threatened for obvious reasons of black supremacy. Black people were undoubtedly stronger, more charismatic and bolder than the non-black masters. Hence, the threat of getting genetic annihilation existed. In other words, white Europeans and non-blacks knew that if they married black, their genes would become submissive and eventually extinct. Biologically, those genes with more chances of survival dominate during fusion and manifestation. Mating results in the fusion of genes that came from the male and female, and the child and its appearance is the manifestation of the dominant genes. In this case, no matter who married a black man, either a white or Arab woman, the genes of that black man would dominate. In other words, it will be the annihilation of non-black's genes. Honestly, this was a massive threat, which cannot be emphasized enough. That's why black slaves were prohibited from marrying any non-black people. They knew the natural law of the survival of the fittest, which makes black superior to all. The non-blacks were so terrified of blacks that they followed the black blood drop strategy. Anyone with even one drop of black blood was considered inferior, taken away from normal people and put in the same class as other black people. But evidence exists that this wasn't the case in Latin America, where the Spanish and Portuguese empires existed. Spanish and Portuguese people would marry their slaves and have children, which could enjoy all the rights. Even Arabs would marry their black slaves and have children, which would introduce themselves as Arabs, following Arab culture and customs. Before we continue further, tell us, are you loving the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and their natural superiority. Let's continue now. 
The third reason for the threat was black being the first ever human civilization. History and fossil records make it clear that the first humans emerged in Africa. No disparity exists on the point that it was Africa where the first humans started living. With time, they developed cognitive skills until reaching the point of building the first human civilization. It's just an unbelievable and rather unorthodox concept that black Africans existed and prospered when no other race was even born. Centuries of time encouraged some black Africans to migrate and come to Asia and Europe. Today, the people living in Asia, Europe, and all other parts of the world are actually predecessors of black Africans. And that's where non-black feel resented. They don't want to accept that they are predecessors of the same race they have been calling inferior for centuries. But honestly, it doesn't matter whether they accept it or not. Getting a DNA test would clear this all up. Already, this has been manifested. Genetic testing has shown that European people have 4% to 20% of their genes, similar to Northwest African ancestral groups. No matter which human you pick, they would have traces of African genes in them, manifesting that blacks are the actual ancestors of everyone. But non-blacks don't want that to happen. If it does, it will make Europeans similar to the black Africans of today, breaking their illusion. Not only that, but this proves that Africa is actually the center of the world, not Europe or West, and that they hold all the power. Within a blink of an eye, black Africans will be added to the power equation, threatening non-blacks. The fourth striking reason for feeling a threat is due to Africa being the most resourceful continent on the planet. Natural resources like oil, gas, gold, silver, diamond, and other precious metals are overflowing in Africa. Mountains exist with gold under a few layers, which Africans often get their hands on, and non-blacks can't digest that. How can they fathom Africans having all the wealth? They cannot forget the phenomenal records of Africa's wealth in Arabic writing. In the writings of Arabs like Al-Fazari, it becomes evident how wealthy and prosperous Africa was centuries ago when the rest of the world didn't know what wealth was. Al-Fazari called Ghana the city of gold and the king of Ghana the wealthiest sovereign alive. Knowing this, non-black cannot allow Africans of today to have all the resources. Hence, using the same stereotyping, Africans are shown as people with less cognitive power to decide about themselves. That's why European colonizers like France, Spain, Italy, and Britain colonized Africa and exploited its natural resources. Even today, France holds 50% of the African nation's gold in its vaults. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney revealed this in an interview. She said that in return for gold, France prints money for African nations, which are just pieces of paper worth nothing. Did you know these threats make non-blacks like white Europe and Asians hostile to black Africans? Do you feel that even after centuries, nothing has changed and non-blacks still subconsciously feel threatened? Tell us in the comment section right below. Haven't you ever wondered why you see one black person in every team, committee, talk show, and film? Why is that so? Let us give you a hint. It shows that everything is normal and black are getting their rights. But the reality is otherwise. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody is talking about. The black culture, civilization, history, and the evidence proving black superiority. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.